In this video, I will be going over the levels of processing model of memory um, as proposed by Crick and Lockhart in 1972 as a result of the criticism of the multi-store model proposed by Atkinson and Sheffrin. Um, the multi-store model will be explained to you in the debriefing that your partner does and you will be explaining the levels of processing model to your partner. Okay, But to give you a brief uh, understanding of the multi-store model of the MSM, um, it is a very structural model in that it focuses on three different components or three different structures involved in memory. Okay, It suggests that there is sensory memory, short-term memory, and long-term memory. Okay, um, The levels of processing model, it's not very structural, rather it focuses on and proposes the processes involved in memory formation. According to this model, information is encoded into the long-term memory based on the level at which it is processed. Okay, The model hypothesizes that the deeper the processing, the longer that memory will last in the long-term memory. Okay, uh, Depth is defined in this model as the research, uh, by the researchers as the meaningfulness extracted from the stimulus rather than the number of times it is analyzed. Okay, Let's say, for example, I am reading a book and I come across a new word. Yeah, I've never come across this word before and I don't know what it means. So now if I try understanding the word through the context, right, I'm trying to understand the meaning of it. Okay, so ne the next time I come across this word in another context, I might be able to understand what it means and I have memory of that word. Okay, um, I could also look it up in a dictionary to understand the true meaning of it and understand the definition of it. So that is processing that word at a deep level because we're associating meaning and context to that word. Okay, um, let's say for example, on the other side, of, I come across that same word and um, I just try learning that word by spelling it out. Let's say the word low card, right? Uh, I say L-O-C-K-H-A-R-T, okay? And I keep spelling that several times. And the next time I come around it and I'm trying to understand what that word means, or I don't even remember it because I've only tried learning the spelling of it. Okay, that is a very shallow level, and it might not necessarily be helpful for me to understand that word in different contexts, okay? That is basically what the researchers meant by the depth of processing. The more deep it is, that means that it is semantically processed. Semantic is the meaning, okay? So if there is meaningful processing, that only means that um, the memory will last longer and be available to you longer, okay? The model proposes that there are two levels of processing. The first is shallow processing. Shallow processing is when little attention is paid to the meaning of the information that you are being exposed to. Rather, attention is paid to surface characteristics such as tone, structure, sound, how it looks, and so on. Okay. For example, if I were to introduce you to a new German word, Schmetterling, for example, right, um, and told you that this is spelled as S-C-H-M-E-T-T-E-R-L-I-N-G, and I didn't tell you what this meant, that is basically shallow processing because the spelling of that word is only structural, okay? And it's also phonetic because you're able to say or hear how I have pronounced it. So, Schmetterling. That is shallow processing. Deep processing, on the other hand, is when attention is given to meaning and elaborate, elaborately processing the information to previously associated memories and schemas as well, okay? So now, if I told you Schmetterling meant butterfly, Maybe the next time I asked you, do you remember the word that I introduced you to? You will be able to remember um, Schmetterling, okay? So now I'm going to make you watch a video of Crick um, confiding in one of his, or um, talking to one of his colleagues to come up with a way of testing how shallow processing and deep processing may in, involve, um, result in better memory, okay? Hello, my friend, Indel Telving. Glad you could make it for a coffee. Why, hello again, the old but prefer his crank. How's it hanging? I need your help. You know how my model of memory is so much better than that multi-store one by Atkinson and Schifferin? 
Yes, I love the levels of processing model you wrote with Rob Lockhart. It makes a lot of sense. I need evidence to back it up. All there is so far is the Hyde and Jenkins experiment from last year. I'd like us to work on a new experiment together. It would be fairly easy. I'd love to help but I'm in the middle of something of my own at the moment. I've just come up with my very own principle to explain Q-dependency. Yes, I heard of that, Tolving's encoding specificity principle. It states that the greater the similarity between the encoding event and... Yes, yes, that's it. I'm a bit sick of hearing it, to be honest. Come and have a break from your forgetting theory work. Join me on my levels of processing study. Oh, okay, what do you want me to do? I have a new chest to our scope, and I'm not afraid to use it. Great. Well, if we're using words, we can use three types of processing. Structural, phonetic, and semantic. I'm not sure which experimental design we should use. Definitely repeated measures design. It's much better as there are no participant variables such as memory ability. And you'll need fewer people, maybe about 20. I have 24 participants lined up. I agree that repeated measures would be best. We'll just have to consider the possible order effects, but I guess we can deal with them. No problem. Just randomize the order of the questions so that one level of processing doesn't come before another level. Okay, I'll get the words and questions together. Shall we do a call like Hyde and Jenkins or Thai recognition? Then we can have a grid with loads of words hiding the originals. Oh, I like your thinking, Craig. Make it difficult, have 20 words at each level so that's 60. Then put them with 120 similar words and see which ones they pick out. The percentage of words recognized will be our dependent variable. If only we had an objective measure of depth. We're assuming the semantic processing is deep as it's more elaborate. If only brain scans had been invented. Maybe in 20 years time we'll be able to repeat the study whilst brain scanning our participants. That would be so cool. You're getting ahead of yourself there, Craig. It's a lovely idea, but you haven't even got your results yet. I assume you'll reject the null hypothesis, though. Well, say we get results like 17% for structural, 36% for phonetic, and 65% for semantic processing. Then I'll run the scores through a stats test and it's bound to be significant. I tell you what, if we get those results, we'll be famous. This could become a cognitive key study. I'm very confident that we'll get significant results which support the levels of processing model. It's a well-planned study and we can have standardized procedures. Sure thing. I think the only thing we could be criticized for is ecological validity as we're only using words. We all use words in memory research though, right? Gotta start somewhere. If we get similar results to Hyde and Jenkins then at least this study will be reliable and we'll control lots of extraneous variables which helps the validity. Yes, the only difference between the conditions will be the level of processing used. Everything else will be the same. Word length, time for each question. I think it's a marvelous plan. When can we start? Well, let's just finish our coffees and get back to my university. I'm so glad you're on board with this, Tulving.